Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. A 37 year old male presented to ER with complaints of fever with chills and rigors since 2 to 3 days. On initial 10 second assessment, airway patent, no pooling of secretions, breathing, respiratory rate was 18 per minute, saturation 98% room air, air entry bilaterally equal, coming to circulation BP was 100 by 60 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate uh, 86 per minute, all peripheral pulsations equally felt and uh, capillary refill time is less than 3 seconds. Coming to disability, GCS was 15 by 15, pupil secretant reacting to light bilaterally. Tech exposure, temperature was 102 degree Fahrenheit and GRBS 90 mg per deciliter. At that point of time, we had given 1 injection PCM, 1, 1 gram IV stat uh, and followed by IV hydration. Coming to history, patient presented with complaints of fever with chills and rigor since 2 to 3 days. It was relieving with paracetamol initially and will appear after some time. It was also associated with headache, nausea and vomiting. He had also had complaints of myalgia and generalized tiredness. No history of altered mental status, seizures, cough, shortness of breath, dysuria, abdominal pain. He gives history of recent travel to Orissa which was 10 days back. On examination, patient was conscious and oriented. Uh, there was no paralectal cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy or edema. Uh, okay. uh, so, here the patient was, was having fever since 3 days, three days. associated with chills. chills. Uh, so, uh, what all are your deficient diagnosis in a patient presenting with complaints of fever and chills? Most common diagnosis will be UTI okay. or complicated UTI like pyelonephritis. Yes. Uh, then pneumonia. Mm, yes. Any abscesses in the body. Mm, yes. Um, malaria. Malaria. All this can present with fever with chills. Okay. Okay. And uh, 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 he, if if a patient, if this patient, ictus was not there. Not there. No. If a patient is having fever associated on examination, general physical exception, you are we found to have uh, ictus. Uh, what will you think? Uh, hepatitis hmm. can be a differential diagnosis. Uh, uh. Can suspect of cholangitis. Uh. Fever abscess or associated with it. Hmm. Okay. Mal Malaria. Malaria. Okay. Leptospirosis. Yes, yes, leptospirosis, Wills disease. Okay. Continue. continue. <coughs> Pulse rate was? Pulse rate was 86 per minute. Okay. Uh, so, where will you see uh, fever with uh, relative bradycardia? Entric fever. Uh. Okay. Uh, coming to examination, per abdomen there is no hepatosplenomegaly, mm. uh, non-tender, soft. Mm. Uh, coming to CVS, S1, S2 normally heard, CNS no focal neurological deficits, no neck stiffness. Mm. Uh, respiratory system was uh, clear, no wheeze or mm. crepes further. Uh, there was no, no neck stiffness? Sir. No neck stiffness Okay. Was okay. Um, on, um, uh, fee, uh, no rash? No, 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 rash. no rash. So, um, can you, Dr. Sai, can you tell a uh, few <coughs> different diagnoses? For a patient present with uh, fever with a rash, measles, dengue, dengue, dengue. Where is it? Chicken pox. Uh, um. Okay. okay. So, at that point, we had taken a VBG mm. which showing pH of 7.45, PCO2 31. Uh, mm. Potassium 3.9, sodium 133, lactate 1.3, creatine of 0.98 and bicarbonate of 23. Mm. And uh, CBC CRP point of care showing WBC count of 3000, hemoglobin 11, platelet of 59000 and CRP of 59. Mm. So, we had initially started with empirical antibiotic with doxy mm. and then we had admitted the patient. Mm. Uh, we uh, had uh, abdomen examination anything? No, hepatosplenomegaly was not there. Okay, okay. not there. Okay. Not there. Uh, in uh, can, you, can you tell me a few differential diagnoses for a uh, uh, patient with hepat fever and uh, he hepatitis pneumonia? Patient with hepat hepatitis pneumonia. Um, any uh, uh, hemolytic anemias? Mm, yes, hemolytic anemias. Uh, then malaria. Malaria. Wheels mm. disease. Uh, leukemias. Uh, lymphomas, and. Uh, all these uh, conditions you will get hepatitis pneumonia, right? Okay. Okay. If uh, a patient is having fever, and <coughs> suppose not this case, if a patient is having fever uh, on general physical examination, uh, Jane violations are present, uh, and uh, uh, hepatitis pneumonia is there, 
and a new new onset murmur is there okay uh, what what will you suspect then infective endocarditis infective endocarditis you should suspect okay okay uh, so we admitted this patient mm -hmm. and uh, we had sent a malarial antigen uh, rapid antigen test okay. which was came pos positive for plasmodium falciparum okay okay uh. so we uh, we have started for treatment of malaria okay okay <coughs> So, uh, how will you diagnose malaria? Malaria can be diagnosed. The uh, um, gold standard is thin and thick uh, blood smear. Okay. Uh, the thin smear will show the species, and thick mm. smear will show the organism. Okay. And uh, there is a quantitative buffy coat, mm. uh, which is that we will centrifuge the blood taken, mm. and then uh, we will add acridin orange. So mm. the plasmodium that uh, the plasmodium will take up the acridin orange and mm. will go give a color. Mm. So with that we can. get a quantitative buffy coat but mm. uh, most commonly in mm. most of the hospital readily uh, available is rapid antigen test malaria okay. antigen test okay. Okay. Uh, uh, what are the uh, most common complications associated with uh, malaria malaria uh, cerebral malaria or can be that it is mainly the affecting the brain mm. which may cause uh, seizures seizures and then coma mm. altered uh, sensorium altered sensorium mm. Mm. and then uh, ARDS can happen mm. uh, then uh, hypoglycemia is the most common complication mm. then lactic acidosis mm. um, um, renal 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 failure mm. okay uh, in lungs it can go say ARDS ARDS anemia mm. with due to hemolysis mm. okay these are the most common one of the most common complication is presentation is can have hypoglycemia that is also okay Okay. How did you manage this patient? Uh, so, uh, since it is uh, uh, positive of plasmodium falciparum, mm. we had started on artesunate, one hundred and twenty mg stat, mm. and then sixty mg per day per day for six days. Mm. And we also most most probably most will have a cross infection, so we also have started on primaquin, fifteen mm. mg per day for fourteen days mm. to prevent any relapse. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is a uh, causative organism. Uh, plasmodium is the mm. causative mm. organism it can be uh, falciparum malaria vivax and ovale okay mm. so uh, there is a recent history of travel right recent history of travel to orissa is the uh, mm. 10 days back and since after that since two days he was having this fever with rigors okay okay uh, peripheral smear what was the peripheral smear report uh, peripheral smear actually uh, uh. that is okay, okay. Only, uh, anemia was there oh, okay. mild anemia was there uh. hemoglobin was 9 okay 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 uh and usc was showing a mild splenomegaly was the mild splenomegaly usc okay okay <coughs> uh total of how how uh, how long should we give treatment for uh, to pre uh, prevent relapse uh, 14 days primaquin 14 days we have to give mm. okay to prevent the relapse okay okay so coming to treatment yes uh, that uh, in why uh, there is treatment of vivax and falciparum is different mm. uh, so in vivax if it is chloroquine resistant mm. uh, uh, chloroquine sensitive area it is chloroquine uh, 300 mg uh, 600 mg statin 300 mg in 624 and 48 hours and then primaquin 15 mg per day okay. per day for mm. 14 days mm. and then uh, for this artesunate uh, falciparum artesunate can be given mm. for mild uh, plasmodium falciparum artesunate 120 mg mm. and followed by 60 mg per day for 6 days mm. and then uh, if severe it is artesunate 2.4 mg per kg mm. stat dose and 2.4 mg per kg at 12 24 hours and then uh, daily mm. or or daily mm -hmm. and then uh, chemo prophylaxis mm. can be given okay. that is uh, it is given uh, one to day one to two days before traveling and one week after coming back mm -hmm. uh, to the place mm. uh, in chloroquine sensitive areas chloroquine 150 mg two tablets mm. stat Uh, weekly or proguanil 100 mg can be given mm. if chloroquine resistant area mefloquine um, 250 mg od weekly or doxy 100 mg od mm. but most mostly we, we usually give for every every uh, situation 250 mg atovaquan plus 100 mg proguanil okay 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 mm. um what is felty syndrome felty syndrome is uh, the um, syndrome consisting of uh, neutropenia uh, splenomegaly and then Rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, okay. Presents like vasculitis, which is mm. okay. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Uh, 
algid malaria okay algid malaria it is a co infection with the gram negative bacteria mm. uh, most commonly salmonella bacteria okay so, uh, it is algid malaria mm. okay so uh, we should uh, read more about um, approach to a patient with fever with rash what all are the diff- uh, differential diagnosis of a patient with fever with rash and uh, what all the dds for hepatitis plenomegaly and um, on a general physical examination what all things we should look for and uh, and treatment of malaria and uh, the importance of uh, giving the con- uh, full tri- full tri- treatment for a, a, at least for 15 days and that's it thank you